Hello, welcome back to Cryptic Woodworks. So today I want to spend just a little bit more time with our cipher wheel. Uh, it's been a, a fun product to make and to figure out the number of different types of ciphers we can create. Now we saw some uh, rather easy ones, the shift cipher, uh, a multi-index cipher. Uh, they're, they're nice, but uh, they can still be cracked via, you know, modern computer methods. But there is one that we can make with this, which is fairly resistant even to, um, you know, modern computer hacking. And it's called a keyword cipher. Now, it's a little bit tougher to create, but then again, it's also harder to crack. So they kind of go hand in hand. Now, a keyword cipher will consist of a couple of pieces. And it's going to be a little bit different from the other two we created. So the first thing, though, we want to find is an index. Uh, it's, a, it's not quite the same as the index we were using before. It can be any letter from our inner ring. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick X as my index. I'll just write that up here. And this is for our reference when we're creating it. Uh, we won't actually be sending the index uh, or the keyword along to our recipient. They would have to know them already. So it's important that you as the creator and the recipient understand what your index and keywords are. So then we want to pick a keyword. Now this can be any words that you want. Uh, I tend to prefer, you know, slightly longer words and if possible those without any repeating letters. Uh, it just makes it even uh, more difficult to break. So what I'm going to do is I'll use about Tuesday as my keyword. And I'm going to write that in such that each letter of my message will have a corresponding letter in the keyword. And that's important for this. It's how the cipher works. And it's okay if uh, a letter in our message is the same as the keyword. That, that, that doesn't hurt anything. Now if we have more letters that we want to encode, we simply repeat the keyword. And you notice that I didn't have the Y on the end. Uh, we just simply keep repeating it until we run out of letters. Now what this lets us do is we're going to set uh, the code wheel for every letter that's in here. So the first thing that we do is we take our index and we set it to the T of our keyword. So I'll go ahead and turn my wheel here. So T and X are aligned. Now I look for M and encode it. And N, <coughs> M happens to equal Q. Then we change our wheel again such that X and U are aligned. And we look for the E and encode it, and that's H. Now we're going to set X and E together. And we're going to look for E and encode it, and that obviously happens to be X. And then we're going to set X and S together. Look for T and encode it, and that's Y. Then we're going to set X and D. Look for F, and that's Z. Then X and A. We look for O, and that's L. Then we do X and Y. And we look for R, and that happens to be Q again. And we try to draw that correctly for us. There we go. And you can see that we just keep going on like this. So we would set X to T. And we look for C. It encodes to G. We set X to U. We look for O. We set it to R. We set X to E again. We look for F. It encodes to Y. 
we set X to S and we look for F again and that's K and then we set X to D we're almost done we look for E it encodes the Y and then we set X to A we look for E again this time it encodes to B so the nice thing about doing this is you'll notice that the E's are always different letters. You can also see that we have Y a couple of times in our cipher text, but it means different letters. So this is what makes this code so hard to crack. Now if we want to decode it, we just need to know our index and our keyword. And I find one of the easiest things to do is I would write out the cipher text. I would write out my keyword over it and it helps me to make sure that I align everything. We already have it here so it's easy to do. So I can set X to T. I look for Q and it is M. And we set X to U. We look for H. It is E. And we set X to E. We look for X, of course that is E. We set X to S. We look for T on the inner ring. Excuse me, we look for Y on the inner ring, that is T. See, it can be a little easy to get confused, got to pay attention. <coughs> And we'll set X to D. We look for Z. It is F. We set X to A. Look for L. It's O. And then finally X and Y. Look for Q. It's R. And we just keep going along like this. So X and T. Look for G. It is C. X and U. Look for R. That's O. What do we have? X and E. Look for Y. Y is F, X and S, look for K, K, it's up here, it's F, X and D, look for Y, Y is E, and one more to go. X and A. Finally B and B is E. So there we have it. We've gone from our cipher text back to our plain text using a keyword cipher. So this is a great one. I think it's a lot of fun to create and use. And the wheel does make this uh, much more simple. This would be a little hard to write out uh, in any other way, especially if you tried to use uh, letter tables or, or something like that. So the wheel definitely makes your life a lot easier. And like I said, this is actually hard to break even with modern technology. So if you were sending this to someone, you could be pretty secure that somebody intercepted it, they probably wouldn't crack it. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you.